Hi, I'm Noelle Hyman with paperclipping.com. I am in the iStock photo and Wacom booth with Renee Pearson. Hello, Hi. how are you? It's good, good to see you? you, I'm great. Thank you. Okay, she's gonna show us some editing, or not editing, some digital stuff that you can do with your scrapbooking and yes. whatever other artwork. Yes, and what I wanna show you is how I used iStock photo images and the Wacom Bamboo tablet to create some beautiful, I think beautiful, artwork and digital scrapbook pages. So I just wanna start over here really quick and show you my light box. That's at iStock Photo, and by the way, if you go to iStockPhoto.com slash craft show, you can get five free images oh. from iStock Photo. So make sure your, your viewers go there and pick up their five free images. But here's my light box. When, when I'm doing a project, I will go out to iStock Photo and just do some searching to find the kinds of images that I want. Now a scrapbooker may say, well, why would you use stock photography? Well, if you look at this light box, there's no photography there. It's all illustrations. And that's really how I use iStock Photo, to pick up some images that I want to use in my digital art. So let's move over here. Now here's the Wacom Bamboo Touch. This is their newest model, and what I love about it is, not only can I use my pen on the tablet, it's also a touch pad, just like on your laptop. So I can, if I'm, if I'm doing something and I want to switch over to the web and look up something, maybe go download an iStock photo image, I can just use the touchpad as naturally as I would do it with my laptop. Okay, so let's get started here. What I created was a collage, and I used three images from iStock Photo. One is a mask, one is a background, and one is an eye. It's an illustration of an eye. Now, here's the first image, and there's the mask. It's actually half of the mask. I'm going to move that over. I hope I get it back in the right position now. <laughs> Okay, so here's the mask, and this is what it looks like in the beginning. The first thing that I'm going to do is change my blending mode from normal to difference, and watch what happens when I do that. Now I've got some interest going on here. Next, I'm just going to turn this layer on. I've already created it. With this one, I used an exclusion blending mode, and anybody who's familiar with Photoshop is familiar with, with these blending modes. To add some contrast back in, I used the Levels Adjustment layer. Then the next thing I wanted to do was add her lips in, give her some more interest. And I think I moved this image over. If you look at her lips, they're bleeding off the side. So let me just move her back in line with her lips. There we go. Okay, so that now she's got those juicy red, you know, sparkly lips going on. Then I wanted to add something behind the mask so that it looked like a real person maybe was behind the mask. So I added the eye. Now, the first thing I did was use the saturation adjustment layer, if, I'm sorry, blending mode. If I move it back to normal, you'll see that it, that's the eye. I'm going to put it back now to saturation. Huh. And now it's that. But I've got another copy of that same image. This time, I changed the blending mode to hard light. So it looks almost like the original, but it gave it just enough of a boost. Um, I'm all about the details, you know, so it gave it just enough of a boost so that that eye really stands out of, of the mask. The next step was to add a background. And I'm doing all of this, by the way, with, with the pen, and I'm not even looking at the tablet, you may notice. It's just like using a mouse. You don't think about it, but it's more natural because everybody knows how to write with the pen, right? All right, so I'm going to turn on my background here, and I used a gradient inside a mask so that it fades in or fades out, how, depending on how you're looking at it. That's another eye stock image, just to give a little more depth. Then I wanted something interesting going on at the top here. Let me go up here. So the, something going on here and something going on here, but not so distinctive that it takes uh, focus away from my mask. So I added this which is actually scroll work from that background, that original background. I just lifted some of the scroll work out and added a mask to that, or a, a, a drop shadow to that. Now I want my mask to pop more. So I just created a drop shadow there, and there it is. So the very last thing for me to do is just to add a title to my new collage. And since it's one of those beautiful Venetian carnival masks, I named it Carnival di Venezia. And there it is. So that's uh, the whole art side of it and how I use stock photography. But what about scrapbooking? What if I wanted to do some things with stock imagery with scrapbooking? Well, let me show you that. Here is a layout. Well, it's just a background right now. And I wanted to do a Halloween layout 
with this little girl. Isn't she cute? She's adorable. She's adorable, I know, she's gorgeous. So I wanted to do her, but I wanted to make her more dramatic. So I did a few things that I can show you after I show you the rest of the layout that are just so super easy to do. But this is the image I ended up with. So let's look at the original image and then let's look at her. And you see how it's, it's more um, contrast, it's just really striking. And this is a very popular technique in film and photography right now, in fine art photography, is that high contrast look. The next thing I did was to add my title, of course. We want to have our title there. So it's Halloween's most spectacular witch. <laughs> She's so cute. And um, I added this image from iStock Photo. Cute. And that's exact. That's all it needed was just that one image. And I actually put in a little bird too that sits on top of her title, a little black black bird. I don't know if you can see it right there, but he's a little black yeah. bird. So let's just quickly go over and show you how I created the girl image. Um, what I'm going to do is turn her first into a black and white image, and then I'm going to bring some of that color back, okay? So uh, to do that, I'm going to use something called a gradient map adjustment layer. And it's in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. And if you notice, I now have a high contrast black and white photo just with that one step. If I turn that off, there's our original color image, and there's the high contrast black and white. Now to bring some color back in, I'm going to use the brush tool. This is actually a mask in Photoshop, in Photoshop element words, it's a mask. And what I want to do is have this gradient map only apply to certain portions of the image. So I'm going to take this brush and I'm just going to paint with black. And do you see I'm bringing some of that image back? And because I'm using a pen tool, I can make it as light or as dark as I want just with the amount of pressure that I put on the pen. So it's really a natural way to do things. Now, I left it zoomed out so you could see the whole image, but actually when I'm doing this kind of work, I, you know, I come all the way in at 100% and then just drag down. And I love the way it just kind of floats when you're dragging. Isn't that cute? It's so cool. Little, it's the little things, right? And, um, and now I'm just going to bring all that back in. So you saw the finished, the final image of um, what I ended up with. But um, a lot of digital scrapbookers use the hue saturation and they just take the saturation down to zero. But what you don't get is your contrast when you do that. I mean, it really does desaturate your image. What you want is the equivalent of a film black and white image. And that's what this little tip with the gradient map will do for you. So that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so this is Renee Pearson and she's here with Wacom. And, and I stock photo, photo. And I teach digital scrapbooking at ReneePearson.com. All right. Thanks. And I'm Noelle Hyman with paperclipping.com.